it's weird to me that a culture so prevalent, just so enormously prevalent, can be so fragile to where just having to see other cultures, such as LGBT cultures, more often than, let's say, one out of 20 characters in either games or movies or news anchors is somehow considered a threat or is something you're tired of seeing or is something that you consider being smeared in your face. It makes people resentful. I honestly don't know what to say about that. It makes me incredibly sad. The overwhelming majority of media and entertainment can be the majority demographic and for the majority demographic, but apparently that's not enough. It needs to be the majority all the time because to put other demographics in there, well, it's got to be artificial. And it, people are skeptical now to the point where it wouldn't matter whether it's organic or artificial. They would still declare it as artificial. That's the level that we're at. And the blame is going towards the minorities. The blame is going towards the people pushing for there being equal representation. At least, you know, equal to, to what it actually is in society. Now, I think it's foolish to artificially insert characters into plot lines that they don't fit. But, I mean, why do we keep having to go to old plot lines anyway? Why can't we make new stories where the characters do fit? Well, people will still look at it as uh, artificial. It's just like, okay, at that point, uh, what isn't artificial? People are looking at having to see the way that other cultures live or just having other demographics. They look at it as a form of indoctrination. That's right. People look at having to see a black character, a gay character, a, w a woman in a part they're not normally in. You're looking at it as indoctrination. That's not indoctrination. It might be a little, sometimes it might seem a little off as far as, well, why is this, this person in this, in this role? But indoctrination? Indoctrination has, has to do with the actual message that's, that's put across. The movie may have some indoctrination in it, but it's not just simply because, oh, there's a gay character in it, or, or there's a black character in it. No, those things by themselves don't make it indoctrination. If it's very unlikely that that sort of thing would happen in real life, then yeah, I mean, it might look a little strange, but again, that's, that's not indoctrination. And also, having to have one out of every 20 characters, let's say, on average, be an LGBT character, yeah, that's, that's not smearing it in your face, I'm sorry. If, you know, if, like, half the titles coming out were you're playing a gay protagonist, yeah, then you could start complaining about that. But this is kind of silly. If even an eighth of the movies that were coming out had an LGBT protagonist, then you could, you know, complain and have it seem valid. But as it stands right now, it's ridiculous. I'm sorry. I'm not saying that you don't have the right to feel the way that you do, but you also need to realize it's, it's kind of silly. Let me ask you something. When's the last time there was a gay protagonist in a movie and it was a serious movie? Or at least the person, the gay person, isn't just comic relief? Go ahead, tell me all about it. Last one I can remember that was a serious part would have been Brokeback Mountain. That's a long time ago. Really. So yeah, it's, it's depressing watching the majority of culture head towards the era that's the Republicans' wet dream, you know, the 1950s. It's the ultimate era for Christian white supremacy and McCarthyism. It's really depressing watching so many of the things that I fought for in the 90s be made essentially null and void. But you know, MAGA, right? Winning. Let's all go womp womp to senior citizens and the disabled and minorities and women and especially poor people. It's what the Republican Party stands for. As long as rich white people who call themselves Christians are doing well, then everything must be doing well. 